Welcome to the second part of the UNS Essentials series. In part one of this series, we introduced what a UNS is. In part two, we'll cover the following. Where does the unified namespace live? Best practices for structuring a unified namespace. Integrating common industrial components into a UNS. Broker Federation for UNS Structuring. Stay tuned, subscribe to our channel, and let us get started. The unified namespace is a consistent manner of organizing the structure and events of your manufacturing business, such that all participants of your enterprise network know where to go to find the data they need. In this way, the UNS is the single source of truth for all data and information within an organization. Moreover, it acts as the central hub or broker for all exchanged information. But how does it actually work? The secret is to treat every smart device, machine, or piece of equipment that uses an IoT communication protocol as a node in your ecosystem. A node that publishes data into a central hub, the UNS, and consumes from it. In other words, the data that the node publishes into the UNS becomes consumable by all parts of your organization, while the node also consumes from the UNS data published by other nodes. For example, in manufacturing, all shop floor components, sensors, machines, PLCs, SCADA, and robots would publish data to the unified namespace. And then enterprise applications such as MES and Cloud Analytics subscribe to the UNS to receive data as events. Then they use that information to execute tasks and in some circumstances publish relevant data back into the UNS for other nodes to consume. If you have a background in IT, you may be tempted to think of UNS as an event-driven system. Indeed, there are similarities, but only to a certain degree. The difference is that an event-driven system only publishes notable events, while UNS allows you to publish every data change. The unified namespace is the hub for the most recent data in your enterprise and is accessible through a single unified interface. One question that gets asked a lot on this topic is, if the UNS is a central repository of information, where does it actually live? It's a great question. Well, since the data and information from a UNS are presumed to be accessible by every network participant in a unified way, it doesn't matter where that data lives. You could implement a UNS structure in a database and have every client query the database for the latest value. However, an MQTT broker is the most commonly used middleware infrastructure for UNS implementation. The MQTT broker is merely the technology used to make data available efficiently and in a scalable manner. The unified namespace is a design approach and strategy that creates a contextual data structure and common endpoint for systems to connect and exchange information. In the words of Walker Reynolds of 4.0 Solutions, who popularized the UNS in the context of industrial digital transformation, the unified namespace is omnipresent and lives everywhere and nowhere. Now that we've established what UNS is and is not, let's get into the practical details of structuring a unified namespace for your manufacturing organization. Standards like the ISA 95 specify how to organize data of manufacturing businesses in a hierarchical structure, making it easy for anyone with the proper permissions to access it. Although there are no hard and fast rules for structuring your UNS, the ISA 95 provides a solid format to use as a guideline. It's a great starting point. However, for some organizations, ISA 95 doesn't reflect the structure of their businesses. In that case, it is best to create a system that is unique to your business. To build your unified namespace structure, it is best practice to use ISA 95 levels to create pockets of information that make up your enterprise hierarchy. The cell level holds information that is relevant to a specific work cell. 
line holds information that is relevant to a particular production line and you repeat the same convention for your area and enterprise levels. Once you've conceptualized what your unified namespace structure should look like to fulfill your needs, you'll need a tool to build out the hierarchical folder structure and push it to the broker, in this case, an MQTT-based UNS. Typically, this tool is an IIoT platform that allows you to create nested directories and map them onto an MQTT topic structure for hierarchical discoverability using wildcards or the Spark Black topic namespace. The Ignition Gateway from Inductive Automation would be an example of this. Ultimately, what you want to end up with is a combination of two things. One, a broker that maps namespaces from the disparate industrial systems into one standardized topic structure, and two, well-defined data models. This implies that your UNS must be able to address the realities of incompatible industrial data structures using a data transformation layer. This is where tools like Hybrid can help transform substandard variables and structures from legacy PLCs and various data stores before publishing into your unified namespace. Here is a look at how integrating data from common industrial components into UNS could look like. A SCADA system would subscribe to the unified namespace to receive all required data to allow plant operators to run production efficiently. It would also publish back to the UNS commands to be executed by nodes on the plant floor. Since the UNS doesn't capture historical data, a process historian would subscribe to topics of interest and store historical data for later retrieval. Further, in a typical plant, some components would frequently query the historian for information. So the historian could publish back frequently queried information into the UNS for interested nodes to consume without having to establish static connections to ask for the data. In addition to handling raw materials and executing work orders, an MES also needs data from the plant floor to enable it to calculate business performance metrics such as OEE or the overall equipment effectiveness. Hence, it would subscribe to the UNS to receive the data, perform calculations, and then publish back performance indicators into the UNS for consumption by nodes that need it to run with context. At any given moment, some nodes in your UNS ecosystem might need to know what is running on a particular production line. Therefore, a query or webhook event could be deployed on the ERP to publish such a dataset into the UNS. Since the unified namespace harmonizes data from different sources to create context in real time, its structure could be used as the basis for logging contextual data in a data warehouse to simplify analytics by avoiding the application of ETL processes to extract data from disparate data stores. In most cases, manufacturing organizations want to deploy a data broker at the plant floor for low latency processing and flexibility, among other reasons. In such a case, you can combine events from multiple MQTT brokers into one centralized broker, otherwise known as broker federation, in order to build a UNS. You can achieve this by deploying a broker with its own local UNS at each site and then transmitting all the local UNSs into one enterprise-wide UNS structure on a centralized broker. What's more, broker federation isn't only limited to the site level. You could deploy a broker at each production line or every machine within a site and then pass the local UNS up to the enterprise level. This video discussed how a unified namespace works and how to structure it. In part 3 of this video series, we will look deeper into how MQTT and Sparkplug can be used to implement a unified namespace. Stay tuned and see you in the next video.